Hello and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I am Kukule Tukele. Now today in studio I'm joined by Farrell Burson who is a, a executive elite financial planner for the Genesis Advisory Group as well as a certified financial planner who is also uh, linked with the Discovery. Good to have you with us as always Farrell. Now Thank today you you're going to decipher a very technical product for us as well as uh, the links and the, the terms uh, and unfortunately some of the threats that might be associated with the need that one actually identifies in order to take out this product but it's with regard to global global long-term risk. Perhaps let's understand that firstly. Does one only uh, perhaps uh, receive some kind of risk on the investment if it does have a global scale? Yes. Um, so Gugu, with regards to global risk uh, investment strategies and portfolio management, um, the emphasis around lately has been that on, on the risk product itself. And because obviously where we are with regards to economic fundamentals, with regards to global uh, um, a status of, of the economy. Um, you know, we've really, uh, as suppliers to a, uh, to a company, looked for innovation and listened to what our clients want to, want to have as part of their portfolios. And the need for going offshore has been prevalent. Mm. It's an ongoing discussion. Uh, almost every review I'm having with, with my clients, there's a requirement saying, well, can we get uh, offshore exposure? And that really forms part of both risk and investment. Sure. So let me just break it down in terms of what I mean by risk. Risk is really defined as a risk product, which is life cover, disability cover. The only difference when you take it offshore is that it is that of uh, uh, exchange uh, based type of risk product. So the product that, uh, that I'd like to just highlight, one is called the dollar life plan from, from Discovery. Mm. And there are two components to that. One is life cover and disability cover, and they are US dollar based. So what that really means is that you're actually buying life cover and disability cover in US dollars. So what happens is that every single month, you have a debit order reoccurring off your bank account, um, and you're buying risk cover on a dollar basis. So what happens with this product is if there is death uh, of a life assured um, or a disability, um, then what would happen is that that policy will pay out in US dollars. And you have two choices. You can either bring it back to South Africa mm -hmm. or you could leave it um, offshore. And what Discovery would do, do through the Guernsey operation is that they would open up a bank account and they would deposit the funds offshore. And obviously this is all perfectly in um, in, in, in agreement with Reserve Bank and all the tax and legal compliances and regulations. Exactly. So it's very exciting from that perspective. And the reason why it has become um, that prevalent is because of the fact that we, we're looking at it from a RAND hedge perspective in terms of well, what will our RAND give us versus what a dollar conversion back to RAND give us in terms of risk cover. Mm -hmm. So therefore $100,000, what would it give us today versus in 10 years time or 15 years time? Because this is obviously a long view in terms of risk planning. Um, so that's the one side of the risk product we talk about. And the other coupled to that is an investment component. Where linked to that recurring premium is an investment component, once again, converted to US dollars. And it's basically a five year commitment in terms of an offshore endowment. Uh, they buy the US dollars, they invest it into the global equity market. Um, is this like an ETF perhaps, or like a selection of so shares that they can actually Very much on? so, yes. It's uh, actually a multi-managed portfolio, uh, almost risk profile to a degree, managed through uh, BlackRock uh, Asset Management, which are you know, probably one of the largest asset yeah. managers on the global planet. Well respected to. Exactly right. And, and the portfolios and the funds that the invest investor goes through is obviously exposed to, to global uh, equities. Mm. So that investment continues on a monthly basis. And at the end of the five years, the client has the option either to leave it there and continue with the investment up to age 65. That is a, a potential cutoff date. Sure. And or otherwise bring it back uh, after maturity date. In which case then you would obviously be, you know, either get the benefit of the rent hedge uh, or based on current uh, volatility that we've been experiencing. It wouldn't be a bad thing. It wouldn't be a bad thing. Exactly. Very much so. We've said quite a bit, Farrah, with regard yes. to risk and uh, getting that uh, investment exposure to but dollar-based and going offshore, who is the typical client that would want to take on yes. uh, this kind of product? Well, that's, a, that's a good question and probably the most relevant out of the conversation because it's not for everybody. Mm. You know, if you have a look at the type of risk, the type of profile, not only risk profile, but the type of profile of individual, it's for a person who has 
a diversified portfolio, a person who wants to diversify globally. Okay. Um, if you have a look at the, the confines of a portfolio in today's terms, you've got local product, local risk product, local investment. Even the local investment has an offshore component. Sure. This is going pure offshore. So it is for an individual who wants to diversify on their portfolio, number one. Number two, who has the affordability to do so. Because as you can imagine, you're buying this US dollars on a monthly basis mm. and based on the volatility of the currency could be quite scary. Does it change actually the monthly installment according to the currency? So what Discovery have done is on the risk product, they've actually launched a special offer which ends on the 30th of June this year, which basically pegs the life component. So the life and disability premium, they've pegged it at 12 Rand to the dollar wow. for the first three years. So that is quite an interesting thing considering the volatility that we've been experiencing. Mm. If the dollar should go over, the Rand to the dollar should go over 20, they'll offer a 20% discount on that premium. So uh, given where we're at, uh, it is quite pertinent and it gives the, the investor uh, some confidence that they, their premiums aren't going to fluctuate that, that, that much on the risk premium. On the investment premium, it is linked, it's priced three days before the debit order, which is the 25th of the month. And whatever the Rand dollar exchange is, that's what the currency will be bought at from an investment point of view. Having said this though, what are some of the implications with regard to how much money you're actually allowed to take offshore yes. uh, uh, as well as the cost implications yes. also of uh, this particular yes, product? Yeah. So in terms of the uh, allowance, it forms part of your million rand per annum for the calendar year discretionary allowance. Um, the maximum one could take out is $4,000. That's what Discovery have capped it at. Um, and the reason why they have done that is um, to, to take advantage of that million rand, but also leave a little bit of a buffer if that client wanted to um, take funds out in above, over and above this uh, risk and investment uh, product. Mm -hmm. um, so they've capped it at $4,000 a month. Having said that though, cost implications so, as well? Okay, so cost implications, the minimum premium on the, on the life side is $50 per month, and the investment side is $200 per month, sure. and the maximum would be 3,900 on the investment and uh, 3,950 and $50 on the life. So 4,000 in total. Mm -hmm. That is the maximum that the, the product allows, which is quite a significant amount if you do the, the conversion to mm. rents. So therefore that also answers your question in terms of the type of person or investor that would be suitable for this product. Exactly. Um, it is a considerable chunk of change every month. Exactly. Yes. So you need to work your way to actually generating that kind of wealth in order to be able to invest. That uh, is correct offshore. as well. And us as advisors, when we come across these type of clients, we would know that if they fall into, um, into that bracket and if they would be interested in this type of a product um, because of the surplus or the investment uh, of funds that is needed on a monthly basis to mm -hmm. sustain uh, this product. Because you know it is a risk product. It is. And a risk product works on the sense that uh, if you pay for it, you see the benefits hopefully on the, on the life side, not too often. On the investment side, you have to see through at least the, f the five years because obviously if early cancellation or withdrawal, there are obviously implications. And so term is a very important part of this investment strategy. Mm. Yes. If we can piggyback off of that particular theme, because going global as well comes yes. with its own set of risk. Uh, there's US elections expected to take place, a vote on a potential Brexit, yes. slowdown in Chinese growth. So it actually yes. makes it a lot more difficult to find opportunities uh, yes. to invest in that will uh, bring about a significant th th return. Th that is correct. And, and you know, I have an ongoing debate with our uh, our portfolio manager at First Fusion Asset Management is w one of the asset managers that Genesis Capital has uh, mm -hmm. on board, uh, James Twidell. And he said to me, Farrell, it's simple. You know, why would you diversify globally? Well, it's simple. Um, South Africa represents less than 1% of GDP. Yeah. And that's your answer. You want to diversify globally in terms of getting some significant exposure offshore? There's the answer. Exactly. Yes. Getting that off of ex exposure offshore is quite uh, important at the moment. Yes. But we've said quite a bit. Let's yes. get a quick recap now of some of the key takeaways from tonight's discussion. Farrell, we've touched on the cost. We've touched on this particular product, which I understand is unique to the South African market and the first of its kind. Uh, but perhaps a key reminder as to what viewers uh, that are watching tonight should actually ask their financial advisors when it comes to uh, looking for this kind of particular yes. product. I'd also like to point it's unique to Discovery. Ah. Uh, no other life assurance company actually has this product offering as well. So to answer your questions, when you're sitting uh, as an advisor with your client, how do you identify in terms of if this product is suitable for them. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned earlier, the first thing is affordability. 
is a case of how much of their monthly budget would be allocated towards funding this global product. Secondly, to make sure that their current risk portfolio, so therefore their current life, disability, dread disease, income protection, local product, supports this offshore product. This does not replace the global risk product. This is in support of, because it only really compensates for life and disability in terms of cover. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, I've had discussions with clients with regards to who have families and they have kids and they're growing up and they foresee one day based on unemployment rates, based on potential insecurity of, of future education for kids, they're saying is that, well, I need to get some cash offshore over time mm. and that build up a bit of a nest egg. And what happens is that when my kids eventually either go to university or they move overseas and find employment there, if that is a better opportunity, they have at least some investment nest egg to basically leverage off of. So it's a very long-term view from that perspective where families are taking these type of decisions. Mm -hmm. Yes. On that, I take it that obviously ties in that quite importantly into the life cycle of these particular investments, which you've alluded to, but the term uh, is quite significant. No yep. less than five years when you're starting. On the right. investment side, no less than five years. In terms of the risk product, one would also consider, would the, uh, the spouse bring the money back or would they leave it or overseas? Mm -hmm. uh, that's obviously an obvious discussion that one has. And if the funds are needed locally, you know, it is a traumatic experience when someone passes away in the family. There's a lot of um, uh, uh, costs that, uh, that one incurs. Mm. And, and um, if it's a case that that money is needed over here to pay for education, to pay for medical bills, to pay for funerals, all that kind of stuff, then one would certainly bring the money back. Um, if there is sufficient in terms of a local portfolio, then to leave the money there over time um, could obviously play in the hands favorably in terms of the family. Especially if our local so. currency does depreciate to the US dollar. That is correct. A trick question that someone might be thinking of at home though, if, is it at all possible to potentially hedge uh, the particular level that you'd like to claim your money back, especially for the risk cover? Because yes. uh, you could say today you're investing at what, 12 Rand to the US dollar as you said, but yes. should in 15 years time, I uh, particularly hedge at what, 16 or yes. 14 where the RAND has recently been trading, is that possible? No, it isn't, okay. Uh, on the life side, they have given a, a three year uh, commitment in terms of that fixed rate. Mm -hmm. On the investment side, it obviously fluctuates. You know, the complexity around getting this product um, has been, I'm sure, uh, it's quite an achievement for Discovery to do so. Um, I don't know of any other company who has got it right. And that makes me wonder why you know, because if you think about having a portfolio, you want global exposure, including your risk. Why mm. has no one else done it before? So I would think that it has got to do with regulation. It's got to do with working in partnership with, with Reserve Bank, with SARS um, and the FSB. And, and to get this product right and everybody happy, uh, I think that uh, it's a wonderful achievement uh, for the clients out there to have that offering. Exactly. Yes. Farrell, thank you so much for your time today and answering our questions with regard to uh, uh, getting that uh, offshore exposure with an underlying dollar basis. And that's where we leave it for personal finance uh, this evening. A big thank you once more to Farrell Burson, who is uh, the Executive Elite Financial Planner for Genesis Advisory Services, also affiliated with Discovery. Now, uh, do be sure to get in touch with us for more details. You can tweet any of your comments or questions to at CNBC Africa using the hashtag Finance410 or to myself at Kukumfupi. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.